Hi, so I've been uh, working more on this Box2D uh, editor tool and I just thought I'd you know update you and let you know what's the new features and what I've improved. Uh, so the first tool we have is the Edge Chain tool and Box2D, this is basically uh, creating a series of connected lines uh, and with this you can have collisions above and below so this makes it good for things like terrain or say you could draw like a, a square box and you could have something inside as well as outside of it. Uh, it's actually interchangeable with the vertex tool at the moment so oops, I'll get rid of that one but you can then also keep going on with it like that. Uh, so because they're interchangeable the reason is is that as you can see here we've got it defined as an edge shape by automatically going with the edge shape tool but we can also easily flick it to polygon tool and you can see it creates this filled polygon uh, so if we go back to edge and if we want we can close the path so this gives a visual representation of that so the other new things that I've added is this metadata tool um, it's pretty basic at the moment so if we have a select of that you can just give it a name properties radius I'll probably just add a whole bunch of a bunch of um, text fields, just things that you may need or want to use, um, and a delimiter field. You know, you can just put whatever data you want there. Um, maybe in time, I'd probably try and get this more like a, uh, a some sort of data array where you can just add your own. But it does the job for the time being. Now, the, probably the biggest thing that I've added um, is this gallery feature. So if we click this, we get this window, um, which we can then import some images. So I've already pre-prepared some. I'm going to select all these. Uh, this fills in that image gallery, and we can then drag this in. So the purpose of these images is to not only help when you want to trace something, but it will also save the coordinates of um, this, these images. So this makes it much easier when you're importing into whatever um, platform you're using, uh, so you can have the images in the exact place that you'd like. So uh, why don't we just create a quick little uh, demo. I'll just delete this, uh, delete that, and that. Okay, so using these uh, images I basically just created them in Illustrator so we'll drag them into place um, put this one over here um, and then alright let's create a couple of platforms so we can drag this one like so um, let's do another one like here now the other things I've added to um, assist with um, moving these images apart from I've got rotation working but I've also got a scale tool working so you can scale your images and again the values of that will be saved so this makes it uh, pretty handy um, for manipulating images and the other thing is if you're wanting to try and save space and say you had like a background um, you could just import a very small texture and then just scale it up massively and that'll save space so let's just create a small little scene I uh, will drag one here we'll leave that one there um, might just have I have one more um, and we'll rotate this one like so and I'll scale it a little bit more. Okay, so there's a few little features that I've added. Uh, one other thing being, um, I found when I was creating my own game levels with it that um, sometimes I'd accidentally click on these when I was trying to actually draw using the tools. So I've created a pin option, so clicking, holding down it will no longer drag, which is pretty cool. And then I've got this lock images, which basically means with that enabled, uh, you won't accidentally even get the property panels popping up. So that's also really handy. Um, and currently I'm using the arrow keys to also pan rather than um, this way that I had before, 
well, it's both ways, but this works a bit better, I find. So um, let's get started. So we've got the images laid out. Um, actually, while we're at it, let's just create these circle images too. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it like it's that. Okay, so we get the edge chain tool and we're going to just trace well, lock images, that's why I've got it there. Uh, we're going to trace um, the contours of this terrain and it's up to you as to how detailed you make it. Obviously performance will be better performance will be better the less uh, edges you have, but in this case it's not a huge area, so I'll do a fairly good job. Um, create a curve there, 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 and there. Um, it's pretty good, and if just drag that around, just get it a little bit neater. Uh, get that a little bit better there. Actually, this one needs probably another point just there, like so. All right, and oh yeah, that was a bit shocking, but all right, I'll leave it like that. Then let's do these ones. So probably easier just to for this one anyway. Just use the rectangle tool, trace it. Uh, it's pretty much perfect, I think. Uh, and then this one. Uh, I'll show you how you can probably speed up by doing this. You can then rotate it a little bit, gets it pretty close, then just drag the individual points. Uh, so, there we go. That's pretty good. And then the last one of these platform ones. Uh, I'll just do a, no, I'll do it the same way. And nearly okay, done. And then last uh, but not least, um, just these circle shapes. Uh, grab the circle tool and it's about right good enough and then do this one as well currently I still need to um, add just a tool for I don't actually have any way of um, manually just entering a radius so I'll add that um, pretty soon. Okay, so we've got all the fixtures drawn. Uh, so now we just need to create the the um, uh, the bodies for them. So, as in the last video, create this one, call it terrain, make it static. Uh, again, I call this I guess platform platform one. Uh, credit static. Thank you. Okay. Create body platform two static. Create platform three static. Okay, so um, on these ones, let's just edge shape. So associated body, we want terrain. Um, that was platform one, that was platform two, and this one was platform three. And then again, just on the circle, bam, bam, circle one. Uh, yeah, dynamic this time. And all right, I'll explain it now. So then I've added this um, associated image field. Basically, with things like terrain, uh, you just draw um, 
place the image wherever you want and then trace it and that's all good but what about when you have something dynamic and you want um, the image to follow the position of the body so that's why I have this associated uh, image field here so if we take off this lock images um, image property let's give it a better name we we'll call it just um, orange <laughs> and we we'll call this one uh, purple lock images again uh, so we can now go um, select orange uh, we'll select purple you can see the others are there but I just prefer having a better name like this okay so um, make sure that this is locked onto whoops circle one and circle two To. So that should be all good now. Uh, just have a quick check. Circle one, circle two, purple, purple. Done, 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 done. I'll probably also try and add a feature. So if you do export or something, you have a little console output just helping if you've forgotten to set something correctly somewhere. Um, but yeah, so that looks all good. Uh, what's static? Yep, cool. So, uh, what else is new? So, we've got this all created. Uh, so now we can export. So, I've done a little bit of extra work there too. So, when we go on to click on export, we now have a little uh, menu system. So, before I was just exporting as XML, but uh, yeah, XML sometimes can be a pain to work with, and JSON is you know often a better uh, format so we can now export to JSON I'll just put a uh, checkbox if you want to save the images uh, with absolute path or just relative and then we can just export the over to here um, demo 3 whatevs and yeah so that's now exported um, so that's uh, what's basically new so I'll show you it actually running in um, the beta of iOS 7 sprite kit uh, not too sure much how much I can talk about since this uh, beta is under NDA but pretty sure I can at least show you some work that I've created with it so I'll now show you that running on my um, iPad uh, so got it up here now um, so as you can see it's loaded in the images uh, everything's where it should be you can see the balls um, falling down hitting and if I tap the screen I've just added some code just to dynamically generate some more of the purple circles and you can see that they fall down and um, create uh, hit the terrain and it all works perfectly so um, it's probably not too far away that I'll probably release a alpha version to the public. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you for watching and I'll keep you updated with uh, what's new.